and garlic nuts. <laughs> Good, you do that while I water the garden. Hey you guys, so it is so hot out here. It doesn't really translate in video. Like I'm editing the video and I, it just doesn't look that hot, but it is so hot. So I had questions, how do I water my garden? I would love to have drip irrigation. That would be absolutely the best thing, but I don't. So this is what I do do. Well, first off, I try to water it early in the morning. But sometimes something cute interferes with all that. <laughs> what I do is I have three hoses going at once. So one hose I have like on my pepper bed and I'm moving it from plant to plant. And at the same time, I've got the other hose on another group of plants. And I'm moving that, so I go back and forth. Time to move, move this hose again to another plant, like in the middle of the bed. There's so much purslane, you can hardly see these peppers, which is great, it's shading them. So I haven't got my shade cloth up on this bed yet. Now it's time to move this hose again. Meanwhile, I have a soaker hose covering all throughout this flower border because this is my PR department for the neighborhood. Keep the neighbors all happy and smiling <laughs> about my veggie garden. So yeah, I have a soaker hose wound all through this because I was getting kind of resentful of this garden. Although I love it, it's beautiful and I wouldn't trade it for anything, it's amazing. But I was spending a lot of time watering it when I needed to be watering the food. So yeah. Love it. Ready? Gonna feed the fish? Good job. Update, my moringa tree is doing great. The one in the pot is doing great. And the one in the ground is doing great. So. They're off and running. So it doesn't take me too, too long going back and forth moving the water. I love zinnias, my favorite flower. Gosh, and they just thrive in this heat. Of course you have to water them, but so beautiful, it's worth it. The jewels of the summer garden. Sweet potatoes are really good about showing you when you need to water. <laughs> they kind of wilt. And then they perk right back up when you water them. So that's good. Definitely keeping your garden really close at hand, like in your front yard or somewhere where you can see it from the house or somewhere where you walk by it every day is going to help you a lot because out of sight is out of mind. And then things can just you can lose things really fast before you figure your watering out. Now new plants that I just planted, like this tomato plant, get water every single day. Because they're trying to set those roots. And if I see any blossoms, I pinch them off. That's new growth, but we don't want it creating tomatoes because they won't, blossoms, because they won't set fruit. We'll let it put all its energy into the roots. And of course, Keep some fresh water for the birds and creatures and they'll stay away from your fruits, the fruits of your labor. <laughs> hey guys, I have friends helping me today. It's so nice to have friends on the homestead and this is actually answer to prayer because I want my homestead to be more of a ministry and I go to people's houses and help with their homestead and they come to mine, so this is such an answer to prayer. So one thing I've learned on the homestead is to put foundations under things because if you don't, they rot really quickly. Although this is pressure treated lumber, so it will last a little bit longer. <laughs> but, so this is the, gonna be the hoop coop. So I'm so excited. Lynn just finished her hoop coop. I did. I did not use pressure treated lumber, I used 
lumber I found on the side of the road. So, Scraps. and I did not put a foundation underneath it. And I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, interesting. <laughs> I wonder what will happen to my coop. <laughs> but you have really thick St. Augustine grass that you're putting in. Grass. So it's, well, you, you know wait what? till it's, the grass, uh, I think when the grass dies, it'll kind of sink in there and yeah, I don't you know. know. I, oh, I, I'm see. willing to ride the ride because I got on that pony. <laughs> yeah, I'm so proud of you. We'll see what happens. I will put a picture of your coop right here oh, good. in the video. So we are just gonna uh, level this out somewhat. Get it somewhat level. And then I'm gonna put a skirt of wire around it to protect my chickens, because as you can see, well hopefully it'll be closer to the ground, but yeah, things can go right under it. Rocket's already like, I'm owning this coop right now, right here. <laughs> it's quite a bit larger than the other one. Yes, yes, we're replacing that one. So it's time is over, although it has served me well for over 10 years. <laughs> so that's good. Okay, let's do this. Thank you, Rocket. So I've learned with leveling, you kind of look at the area first, and we can tell that it's sloping down this way and sloping back. So we're gonna start. I am terrible at leveling things, so I'm glad I have a friend here. Are you better at leveling things? We're gonna find out. We're right gonna now. find out, okay. Uh, yeah. Perfectionism, how much of my perfectionism do you want me to bring to play? <laughs> Oh no, true perfectionist. And we've already said that perfectionism does not belong in homesteading, right? So we're gonna keep reminding ourselves of that. So we're gonna start with this spot, this corner, after surmising that it's the way it's tilting. <laughs> after an overview of our slant, but the ground is rock hard. So we are gonna wet it down and try again. <laughs> So we decided really not to level the foundation so much as the whole purpose, what I really want is it just lifted off of the earth so it won't rot. So I think we've achieved that. And so even though it's lifted up still in places, I'm just gonna put a skirt on it. You can see it's kinda, so critters can't come right under it. So I like this idea much better because now we can get started with a coop. And I was, this was kind of stalling me and I was like, uh, I'm, uh, I keep putting this off. So now we can move forward. Yes. So we're putting the stones like right on the edge so we can come down with the skirt and the skirt is going to be hard wire cloth that's stapled to this and then bent and along the ground and then using stakes to put it in the ground. So we don't have any critters digging in or going under. All right. We can actually put the hoops up. I think. <laughs> Super easy. This is easy? Okay, yes. good. Why don't we do one and then the other boys can do one? Okay. I mean, this is like, okay. no, like so much one. easier than you could ever imagine. Okay. It's just awkward. Yeah. We need to, it needs to go play flat in order to do this. Okay. Got it? Okay, now start walking toward me. <laughs> I know it's like I said it's awkward. It's not hard, it's just awkward. Come on. You know what we might want to do? We might want to have a uh mine would have stone right there before we might keep coming. We can address it once you get it in here. So we are using pipe hanger, yeah, pipe plumber's hanger. pipe hanger, yeah, right? Because yeah, it's got little holes in it, and we cut it with these wire snippers. Here's the bag. There we go. It's yes. galvanized metal hanger strap. 
Very fancy. Yes. <laughs> and we cut it into little pieces. This was all from Living Traditions Homestead, so I will link up to them. Wonderful site. Love them. They're awesome. Yes. Zip tying it together before we attach it permanently, just to keep them together. Okay, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> see if you guys can see that. It's a little bit off. So yeah, they make it look so easy on those on the on living traditions, which they yeah. also use brand new lumber. True, they yeah. use brand new lumber. This is scrap lumber. lumber yes, yeah, it's get warped. What you get. Yeah, it was warped. So, okay, so we are just trying to cipher <laughs> on. Um, we were going to cut off. This is what they did in living tradition: is they just cut off a little a straight amount of this cattle panel and then popped it into place, and it fit perfect. <laughs> It probably would have been good to square the corners with a diagonal piece, all the corners before. Or block or whatever. Yeah, whatever we need to do. Yeah, but I know they didn't do that living traditions, but like you said, new lumber. Yeah, so. Okay, so we're gonna, we're thinking of overlapping. So this might happen to you, who knows? <laughs> so we're thinking of just putting it up and overlapping the edges because it's a little too long. Yeah. And this is also why I made, purposefully made mine for exactly how lot wide the panels were so I would not have to cut anything. Yeah, she made it to exactly the panels because measurement. I did not want to have to cut the right. panels because I figured of all the things that I could possibly do, that would be the least, that would freak me out the most and be most difficult for me. Yeah, so, but I went with 12 foot boards just like live because I wanted to do it just like living tradition so it'd be just as easy as they did. <laughs> okay, you guys, so we have an idea how to fix this. <laughs> We're not going to cut it off. We're, Lynn had an idea. I should say, I should let you own it. No, don't, don't, don't <laughs> throw me down the river yet. It may not work. <laughs> so we screwed on these boards, and our idea is we're going to arch it up and put it on these boards and then we're gonna scoot it in this panel anyway you guys so will see have to scoot the out so this panel that's laying free now is gonna slide inside here yes like this so right. the egg the last panel will slide inside here yes and then it doesn't matter if it's crooked or not no oh I'm sorry this is what we're thinking and then this guy on this side we're gonna have to undo this undo that so one otherwise right. we should be able to just slide it right slide in. it in there okay here goes god bless us <laughs> Pray. <They may> need <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So we look you guys we overlapped it. So now we don't even have to worry about cutting it. About cutting it because it is even now. Brilliant. All right, let's finish this up. Yeah, it's we really not didn't. necessary. It just it makes me feel more confident that we're not going to have any shifting. And it makes it more structurally sound, I think. Yes. At least in my head it does. <laughs> Maybe not in real reality. <laughs> <laughs> we rigged it. <laughs> Huge homestead victory. <laughs> yes. It's 
small steps to big victories. I have to say while doing this coop project that I know you guys that I do things step by step because I really wish that my homestead experience was the type of thing where I could start a project and finish it all in one video, all in one day. <laughs> that would be awesome. But my life doesn't work that way and I'm kind of wagering that there are those of you, your life doesn't work that way either. I mean, I'm doing a small step during babies. <laughs> during baby's nap. Um, I'm doing a small step in the morning when it's cool and then a small step in the evening while it's cool again. So that's just the way my homestead works. Small steps to big victory. So having said that, I promise you guys when we get all done with the coop, I will take all the footage that I've done building it and put it all together for you. In the meantime, if you're interested, in starting a coop like this, Living Traditions Homestead did an excellent video of the build of it, which I am following. I'm just uh, changing a few things and having a few problems along the way that they didn't have. But anyway, so I will leave a link down below every video that I have the coop shown, the coop build shown, so that you can go and just check out their video and see how from start to finish they did a great job. Sometimes, like today, we worked on the hoop coop in the morning, so it's afternoon. It's too hot for me really to be out here moving my hoses back and forth while I'm working in the garden because the Texas heat is just baking it right now. Thank goodness for some shade. So, in a case like this, when I really can't be out there under the extreme heat, this is what I, this is how I water. I have two sprinklers, like I said, two hoses that come in my garden, so I just set them up at a very low level. And I go inside and I set the timer, so it's just a lot of coming in and out and moving, moving hoses, moving water. It is so hard during these drought conditions to justify like how much money am I spending on water? Should I try to keep the garden going? You know, how much am I getting of produce out of the garden? Um, and yeah, you have to weigh that and you don't know whether there's gonna be a drought or not. So you start things and should you continue with them? And is there gonna be some shortages? So are you gonna need those things? <laughs> it's, it's a hard gamble. Definitely this drought in Texas is kicking our butts. It hasn't rained here in weeks and the ranchers are hurting. I understand there's a lot of cattle being sold off and um, yeah, the price of hay is really expensive. The pasture grasses aren't that good. So yeah, it's really kicking our butts here in Texas. But my garden is doing pretty good. We're still putting out food. Thank goodness for water. I'm definitely trying to conserve it as best as I can. Really wish I had drip irrigation. That is definitely gonna be in the works. For next summer, I'm hoping to have it installed at the beginning of the next dry season for sure. How about you guys? How do you water your garden? Do you have any out of the box approaches? Let me know in the comments. While I'm waiting to move my sprinkler, I'll talk to you guys in the shade. Uh, I do have a plan for next summer that I'm kind of pretty excited about other than um, drip irrigation. I'm also going to do with my son an aquaponic system. So I'm kind of thinking in my brain that I will have a season in springtime growing food and then my garden will pretty much shut down in the summertime and I will move to my aquaponics tank for most of my food and then another season short season in the fall and then of course winter gardening um, throughout the winter by covering so I'm hoping that that will really help me in the summertime to keep the cost of water down to be just the cost of course flowing from the fish waste into the aquaponics tank and um, growing food that way so I'm really excited about that about that he did a little small aquaponics tank he built one on his balcony I'll try to get a picture of it for you guys and they're growing things there but it's pretty shady there 
and it's of course a small system since it's in a, on an apartment balcony. But he's really excited about doing a full scale system for me on my property in more of a sun situation. So I'm going to share that with you guys. So stay tuned. That will be coming and probably in August we'll, we'll get started on that. So that will be a fun project. Hopefully we'll help out these drought conditions in the summer Texas heat. How about you guys? Anyone out there doing aquaponics? What is it like for you? Do you shut down your garden and go to your aquaponic system? Is that a valuable, um, is that a valid um, idea? Will that work? I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you do aquaponics and what you have to share about it. We would love to hear. Hey guys, quick update. The winners against the squash vine borer, the resistant variety seem to be Ron Denise. There's one that got away from me that we will eat tonight. I will link up to all of these and the other one that seems to be a winner is the lemon squash. I will link up to both of these. Now the rampancante or the trombone squash has not started producing yet fruit yet it does take a lot longer to start producing fruit into the season but it seems to be doing well i can tell there are places where the squash vine borer has gotten into it but it's holding strong i can definitely tell there are places where it's gotten into it but it seems to be doing well i think the stem is so so solid that it just I don't don't think it can get very far and so it doesn't kill the plant so these are the winners this season keep in mind you guys that after each watering I'm still spraying BT to kill that caterpillar of the squash vine borer as it eats into the stem and there are holes in the stem I kind of spray in that too so I will link up to a video where I totally, the comprehensive battle plan of the squash bug and the squash vine boar at the end of this video. So you can go watch that if you want to. It really goes into depth, everything you can do to battle your nemesis in the garden. Okay guys, good luck. Stay safe, stay shaded, and stay cool. <laughs> Bye.